Hi everyone, this is Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller and Bloxham Medical, and I'm here today to do an update on our uh, vertiporfin project. So a few things before we dive into this quick video, I'm trying to make this one a little bit quicker today. Uh, first of all, if you're watching this video and you have no idea what I'm talking about, what vertiporfin is, uh, there are some links down here in the description. I'm not really going to go over what the medication is, what we're trying to do with it here. So please check those out before you watch uh, this video if you're interested in the subject. Number one, number two, the update today is the five month update of these uh, patients that, that underwent the vertiporfin treatment. Um, for those of you following, you'll remember that my last update was at three months. Um, the reason I didn't do a four month update is because it took a while to get the pictures back from the patients. Uh, it, it's always a, a, a tricky thing. Anyone will tell you that's, that's around any sort of little test like this that um, many times patients are you know, uh, busy, obviously, and it, it's hard to get them to, to send uh, pictures or to come see us. So we do appreciate it, but it can take a while sometimes. So it took a while to get the four month updates. Uh, and when I did, what I noticed was that they were very similar to the three month updates with one exception in one of the patients, which I will get into here in a moment. Um, the, the five month updates, though, I think were a little bit different. So that's why I'm sharing this today. Uh, the last thing I will say is that, um, the patient should now be at right about the six month mark. So I'm going to start to collect the six month data now. Um, and hopefully I'll even get to see a few more of them in person um, as they're due for just six month follow ups on the, the transplant work they had done in general. So hopefully maybe a little bit more detailed updates. I know there's been some comments about the picture quality. You know, it's tough to take pictures of your own donor area. And a lot of times if you have someone else taking pictures for you, they don't necessarily know, you know exactly what you're, you're looking to see and not see. So it can be a little bit tricky, but I uh, truly appreciate, you know, the patients submitting these to, to me and, and uh, you know, staying consistent with the, the updates with the trial regardless. But um, six months, uh, we will get those images and maybe even some video and uh, some really detailed update. I'll probably do a longer video at six months. That'll kind of be a little bit, I don't even want to call it the halfway point, but I think it's a good time to sort of reflect on what we're noticing with this project thus far. So without further ado, let's jump into this quick uh, vertiporfin update five months after the, the little, ex the little uh, trial, if, if you will, that we did here. So um, first thing I wanted to mention is you know, there, there's kind of two aspects to what we were hoping to see with vertiporfin. The, the one uh, that was probably, I, I thought, would, would you know be the, the thing we would notice the most uh, would be just reduction in, in scarring and scar tissue, smaller scars. That's one thing we've been looking for. And I think I'm seeing that uh, definitely in one patient. Um, the other thing we were hoping to maybe see was, um, re I don't want to, even if I want to say regeneration, but we were, we were hoping to see uh, tissue that kind of healed itself with normal skin appendages, those skin appendages being things like sweat glands and hair follicles. And it's interesting because some of the comments people had initially made when we were looking at, at this medication was, you know, if the activity of vertiporfin works the way it's supposed to, there is a scenario where, um, you know, you may not get those really rock hard, small scars. You may actually get tissue that heals up a little bit looser in a sense. Um, however, that tissue that heals up, you know, a little bit looser, a little bit more similar to like the width we'd see in, in, in a regular scar, um, may not be like true scar tissue, you know, maybe a combination of normal tissue, some scar tissue, and it may have, you know, some appendages in it, like sweat glands and hair follicles, like normal skin tissue. So that was something we were on the lookout for. And um, again, I think I'm seeing a little bit of that as well. So two different things we could look at here is, is vertiporfin resulting in very small, uh, you know, harder to pick up scars. And then maybe the, the area of the defect of the wound healing up kind of similar um, to the size that we would expect on a normal scar, but maybe that tissue isn't true scar tissue. Maybe it's a little different. Maybe it's healing up like normal skin. And if it heals up like normal skin and hair grows through it, then it doesn't really matter. This was kind of what people brought up online. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't heal up as small because it's going to have, you know, it's, it's not really scar tissue. It's, it's more like tissue, it's partial scar, partial hair or uh, sweat glands growing through it, you know, partial normal skin. So we'll kind of uh, look into these examples here and see if we see a little bit of, of both of that. So uh, let's jump into the first patient. So this first patient is the gentleman who was a virgin patient. Um, this was the first uh, time he'd had any surgery. I treated portions of excisions with vertiporfin, uh, without vertiporfin, excuse me, and then I treated one portion with it. So let's see how he looks at five months. 
All right, so here are uh, the images that he sent me at five months. So that image that you're seeing, if you're looking at your screen on the left, that says untreated under it, is the untreated area. So this is, is a region where I just cut out, uh, you know, like sized a normal section like we would in a normal FUT procedure or a modified skipped FUT procedure where we're taking sections and leaving sections. Uh, closed it up, you know, left it alone to heal like normal. The section on the right is an area where I did the same thing, I excised it, but before I closed up this little section, I treated it with vertiporfin. So in these images, um, and again, I'm, I'm gonna try not to give too much of, of my you know opinion or my bias or anything, but from what I'm seeing in these images, you know, when I look at this, at this uh, picture on the left here, um, this looks like it's healing up into a pretty traditional you know, FUT scar. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a defect, I believe from like here to here is the, the scar, or you can see from here to here. Looks like it's a good little scar. Again, you know, I, I don't mean to plug FUT in these videos, but I will give a, a small shout out to FUT here because I think a lot of these patients are, are, are showing that you know, FUT, even without any kind of treatment, does heal up really well, tends to leave us with nice little scars. But um, to me, this looks like it's healing into a pretty you know, normal scar. He'll maybe have a two millimeter scar. Um, again, this is only five months, so the scar is, is bigger than it's going to be. Uh, it takes you know, 12, 18, even more time for scars to fully contract, to fully mature. So it's going to be smaller. But again, as of right now, it looks like a pretty normal, maybe two millimeter scar. When I look at this one here, uh, to me, this looks like more of that, that real kind of rock hard um, you know, pencil line that we, that we hope to uh, always achieve with FUT. Um, it also looks still a little different. You know, to me, these wounds look like they're healing differently. That's kind of been a common theme. When patients ask me, what are you seeing with the vertiporfin? I always tell them, uh, it looks like it's doing something and it looks like the wounds are healing up differently. What that'll mean in the end, I have no idea. Um, however, that's what I'm seeing thus far. So to me, you know, this looks like about a two millimeter, pretty normal, good FET scar, but this one to me looks like it's even even smaller. So are we seeing you know, at five months that, that the vertiporfin is in a, in a virgin patient who's never had any surgery before, and he's the only virgin patient that I, I uh, performed the, the little verti, vertiporfin um, test on, you know, are we seeing smaller scars in a virgin patient that had no prior scar tissue there? So good one there. Um, just subjectively speaking, I always ask these patients, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? He tells me that the treated region is really hard to find. Um, he said that when he feel, reaches back there, he still believes he can feel more hair, which is something that I've seen in these patients the entire time. They seem to have just more kind of activity going on in the vertiporfin treated region. So that's the first patient. So the second patient that we'll jump into now at five months is the gentleman who had a history of hypertrophic scarring. And I was basically excising um, portions of his old scar and I was leaving portions of it in between to kind of act as a control. So this patient is very um, interesting to me because from what I'm seeing uh, and what I kind of mentioned in the beginning of this video is the, the defect where I, I took out these sections and treated it with the vertiporfin before closing. To me, it looks like it's you know healing a little smaller, possibly, and again, it's five months, so anything goes. I would never tell a patient at five months, your scar is, is going to stay that size. It's always gonna get smaller. But um, maybe a little bit you know smaller when you compare it to the control, and we'll look at this in a moment here, um, or when you compare it to an area on him, because I did take areas on him uh, for, for grafts for a procedure, and then I didn't treat that with vertiporfin, so we'll compare it to, really we're comparing it to an untreated area that I did excise and close up versus a treated area that I excise and close up. But if you look at the area that I treated, you know, obviously there's some stuff going on there. Um, so let's kind of jump into it now and you'll see what I'm, I'm referring to here. So here is this patient uh, at, at five months. So this area here, obviously at the left part of your screen is the untreated area. This is an area on the side of him that I excised a piece for um, a, a portion of, of the scalp to use as, a, as grafts for his FET procedure. And then this area here is old scar that I cut out and uh, treated with vertiporfin before I closed it up. So again, um, you can see that this patient just has a, a natural uh, proclivity towards slightly wider healing. Um, this happens, it's, it's, it's rarer that it happens, but it does happen. Um, and it seems like he's healing well, all things considered, and the scar here will get smaller. But again, I think he's on his way to healing with a slightly wider um, you know, FUT scar in general. When you compare it to like the previous patient, I still think it'll be completely fine. It'll probably wind up being still within our, our, our average or maybe a little bit above it. But again, he just has that kind of proclivity to wider wound healing. And when we look here on the right, again, my immediate off the cuff reaction is just that it looks different. You know, this, these two areas look very different. Um, here, the tissue already has that kind of uh, pink, sort of shiny 
um, hard fibrotic look to it. Here, the tissue still looks looks does not look homogenous to me. It still looks very different. And there are a lot of hairs, you know, growing in this whatever this region is going to be. Um, is this region, you know, a combination of scar tissue and sort of tissue that's regenerated more normally because of the vertiporfin? Um, it's hard to say. However, you know, when when we close up. Um, a, a wound that we're not using a trichophytic closure for. So we're not purposely closing it to, to create hair to grow through it. And that's what I did here to, to not bias this because I didn't want to close these using a trichophytic closure and then have hair growing through it and say, aha, you know, look what we've done. Um, when we close, you know, these areas not in a trichophytic manner, it's not uncommon to see stuff like this on the perimeter. You know, this is a, a, a hair here that's growing from like above, um, you know, a little bit above. You can see some of these creeping up uh, kind of on the periphery here. But I mean, this is just desolate scar tissue there. Here, you know, it's, it's hard not to notice this little guy or this guy or this guy, um, you know, particularly one like this. I mean, this is so centered. Maybe here you could say, ah, that's close to the, to the edge. But I mean, one like this, I mean, that, that, that's clearly a hair that's, you know, pretty short. Uh, it, it looks a little different in general in character. It's, it's a, a single, um, you know, follicular unit grouping appears to be. Um, so some of this is interesting. You know, some of this, this, is, this is definitely healing differently. And a couple things I'll say about this is, like I was mentioning before, however, to me, the defect in this wound um, looks pretty similar, you know, in size. I mean, this may be one of those instances where the vertiporfin um, is... is creating like different tissue it's not it's not traditional scar tissue per se but it's maybe not giving um you know that that really rock hard um nature you know that 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 just we are not letting this this move you know any any more than it is um type of wound healing so um you know is that something that we're going to see are different patients going to respond differently to vertiporfin um does the fact that this patient had prior scar play a role um d does dosage matter because i will say that on this patient um you know i treated multiple spots on the back on him and there were some areas that i think were a little smaller than this but they didn't show that much you know activity yet maybe they'll wake up and they will show more um so you know is it is it different uh it, with different dosages, um, different, different patients. It's hard to say for sure, but I will say that this is, um, you know, in my kind of just overview, my analysis of this, it definitely looks different. You know, I, I think it's hard to look at these two and say, nah, you know, they're, they're healing up exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> I also would say that if these, if a couple of these guys really sort of thicken up and fatten into those nice terminal hairs like this here, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be pretty impressed. You know, th this is, this is going to be a pretty well camouflaged area. It almost looked like a scar that we FU eat into or something like that. So that's encouraging. Um, as is this last patient, you know, this is also encouraging seeing, you know, smaller wound healing there. I, I, I like that. Um, another interesting thing I'll say about this patient, again, just kind of subjectively just going over what they've been reporting to me. This patient told me, uh, very interesting. And without any sort of like, I didn't, I didn't, you know, lead him at all. I just said, Hey, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? He told me when he reaches into the donor area, the areas that we did not treat with vertiporfin to me, he said, feel like a scar. And he's had uh, surgery before, so he knows what that feels like. He said, it feels like a scar. He says, when he reaches into the vertiporfin regions, it just feels like skin. Um, and it's hard to say what that means. That probably means something different to everybody. But I think that's really fascinating that, that he feels a difference, just, just physically palpating with his fingers. He can feel a difference between the vertiporfin treated uh, tissue and the non vertiporfin treated tissue. So, you know, interesting. So the last patient we'll jump into here is the gentleman who um, had a history of a couple FUT procedures, um, actually had a pretty darn good scar, but just because he's a good sport, um, he was letting us cut out a few areas uh, to, to sort of reclose with different concentrations, different uh, amounts of vertiporfin in the tissue, and also one area where we cut out um, and did not treat. We just cut it out and reclosed it, and we used a couple extra of those grafts to kind of throw in on him. But... Um, areas of, of not only um, scar left in between, so you can see controls. You know, I, I took a piece, I left a piece of old scar, I took a piece so I could compare like, hey, this is an area we didn't do anything to, this is a vertiporfin area. Then also an area on him that I took, um, closed up, and did not treat with vertiporfin, so I could compare an area that was actively operated on then and not treat with vertiporfin. So before I jump into this gentleman, there was a comment I made in the beginning saying that I did notice something interesting in one patient at four months. So this gentleman, um, I actually did get the chance to kind of converse with them a little bit more and see a little bit more at four months. And this was the guy where at three months I had said that I was a, a, a little, you know, I'm, I'm trying to remain the objective scientist, but I was a little bit disappointed, uh, I have to admit that, at 
three months on him because at one and two months he had a lot of a lot of activity going on growing um through those treated areas and i was, I was like wow it's really impressive you know this hair just just grew it's like where did that come from why is it growing so fast then at three months um it shed it was gone i'm like oh no you know maybe this is is something where it's just kind of the vertiporfin sort of jump started a few hairs um you know in the beginning and then it kind of petered out and who knows and i mentioned i think in my last video that hey i'm hoping this turns around i'm hoping this is a shed you know and things wake up and start growing maybe around the same timetable that we would see you know like a transplant for example maybe four, three four months or so so i saw this patient back at four months i didn't really see him back but i i, I got a little bit of data back on him before months and what i noticed was i didn't really see much growing in those areas but i did notice that he had these larger like pinkish red dots in a few areas and I said, that's kind of odd. Have you noticed that? He didn't really notice anything. He really hasn't really uh, reported too much, like subjectively, that he's feeling back there or anything like that, except for just that he says that the vertiporfin regions feel like they have more hair. But I said, have you noticed these dots? Do they itch? Do they annoy you? And he just kind of said, no, I haven't really noticed them. So these pink dots, you know, they almost look to me like little ingrowns. Like when I see patients growing in from transplants, they have little you know, ingrowns sometimes as the, the transplanted hair tries to kind of penetrate the skin for the first time. So I noticed some little pink dots. And I'm like, those are interesting. I hope when I see those again, you know, maybe it was an initial shed and those have turned back into hair. And I believe that's what I saw on him. So let's jump into his five month photos now. So the first picture I'm going to show on him. So this is the untreated area at five months. So this is the area on the side of him where I cut out, I excised the piece, um, stole a few grafts out of it, but closed it up, no treatment at all. And this is healing into um, you know, a normal scar. And I think that this is actually healing up wider than his prior strip scars. Prior strip scar was, again, you know, a little, little plug for FUT here. I'm a, I'm a big FUT fan. Um, his prior scar was good, even in, in the, the skin type of a patient that I typically wouldn't expect to heal really well. Um, or in, I shouldn't say really well, into one of those real rock hard um, scars. He, he had healed beautifully. Um, you know, maybe a, a, a two millimeter, one, one and a half, two millimeter scar uh, after a couple FUTs. But this was the third excision on him. And what I've told patients, if you've seen me for a consultation, is sometimes um, when we get to a point in like advanced hair loss patients where we're at like two strip surgeries and we have to decide if, you know, want more grafts and we have to decide if we're going FUE or FUT. If that FUT scar is in really good shape, sometimes I'm very tempted to leave it alone and switch to FUE at that point because. Um, I can almost always or usually get the scar to heal up the same between surgery one and two. Obviously, there's always a risk anytime you open up that, open up that tissue again, but usually I can get it to heal the same between surgery one and two, where I've noticed, uh, you know, sometimes very small scars can become a little bit wider scars is going from two to three. So this is going from two to three on him with no treatment. I think it's a little bit wider than his uh, scar was prior. Again, five months, so I would expect it to be wider. Three to five months is probably the worst uh, FUT scars ever look. They're, they're, they're wider than they're going to be because that wound contraction hasn't really started yet. You typically have sh more shock loss around them. They're, they're pinker. They're still more inflamed. They're bumpy. As time goes on, all FUT scars are going to contract. They're going to get smaller. They're going to get paler. Uh, any loss around them is going to resolve. They're going to flatten. So it's not th this scar could wind up being you know, just as good as, as it was prior. But as of right now, it just looks like a, an FUT scar at five months. Um, you can see this very classic scar tissue, you know, between these two areas. Um, obviously, this is, is regular skin. This is regular skin. This is this is scar tissue. Uh, it has that classic look. You know, it looks looks pretty pretty barren. You know, uh, pretty void of the normal things we see in scar tissue. So, let's jump into next um, a, tr a couple of treated areas on him. So the untreated part that I, I'm going to I'm going to use in reference here in a moment is kind of up here, closer to his ear, his left ear, and this is kind of coming around the the occipital, the back region on him. So here's a treated area. Here is an untreated control. So this is an old the, his old strip scar that we just left untreated. Good good little strip scar there. Um, and then this is another treated region here. You can see where it's kind of pink. So first of all, just sort of stepping back the big picture. To me, again, the vertiporfin treated areas compared to the non-treated areas just look a little bit more exciting. There's a little bit more going on when I look at those areas. The other thing I really want to point out is so this is one of those pink bumps. So you can see. So imagine what I saw at four months, and I, I should have included those pictures but what i saw at four months was imagine this little pink mound here but with nothing growing out of it and then at five months what do i see is this short little white hair and you can see it is shorter it it, it seems to uh, to end about here compared to some of his other hairs which are clearly much longer um but that's pretty cool i mean there you know this this was a, a hair that i think again is growing 
you know, kind of in the, the, the middle of the wound. You know, here are the edges of the wound. I mean, you can see here's a wound edge, here's a wound edge. This should all be scar tissue here. And obviously you've got a couple guys that are, that are a little further down and that's great. Um, that could be vertiporfin, that could not be vertiporfin. But I mean, this one here is, is pretty smack dab in the middle. And it's one of those pink dots that started off kind of as nothing. And now has a hair coming out of it. That's exciting. Uh, same thing, you know, over here, a little pink, a little bit more, uh, more going on. So here is that, this is that same region uh, that had that pink, that, uh, pink kind of mound where the uh, pink little blemish where the hair is growing out. And then this is that same untreated area that I was talking about before. So when you compare the two again, uh, I, I think it's, it's pretty objectively different between these two. The one on the, on the left, the untreated region to me has that, that very, um, that very, uh, sorry to be a little bit crass that very dead look to it to me scar tissue is just kind of lifeless you know it's 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 paler or sometimes it has sort of this this kind of odd sheen to it that this one does here um you can see it it, it lacks sort of that that um soft you know uh pliable uh turgid look of of normal uh skin tissue and that's what it has there and then when i look at this other one it looks happier looks healthier you know the the, the tissue doesn't quite have as much of that that sort of just uh, you know almost desert look to it, and you can see uh, this is this is my guy here. This is the little the little pink blemish that's growing a hair. I don't see any of those here. I don't see any of those. I see some guys that are close to the perimeter, um, and you can see it's actually interesting because you can see he, he's probably going to have more hairs that are going to grow here. This is classic shock loss. So you can see this is actually the wound edge here. This whole thing's not going to be a scar. This is the wound edge here. This is where he's going to have uh, shock loss hairs resolved. You can see that's a shocked hair that's resolving from normal surgery um but more activity here looks like less shock loss and then definitely some stuff growing through and you can also see to me this looks this resembles more of just like the normal tissue the 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 actual what'll be the scar tissue itself more of the normal tissue so uh this is now we're moving kind of around his scalp so this was more on the left side the back now we're kind of moving up the right and this is actually just one picture of this entire side i just put a blue line so you can see the separation between it so this is a treated area um, this is an untreated control. So this is his old strip scar. So you can see a good little strip scar. I know it probably looks wider than it is blown up uh, because it's blown up like that. But this is about a two millimeter strip scar. You can see this is the perimeter here. This is where he has normal hair. His, his skin's a little bit tanner. And you can see here is that pale fibrotic scar tissue. Uh, two strips, good scar. Here is the vertiporfin treated area. So obviously you would expect a wound that's actively healing to be a little bit pinker compared to, you know, fibrotic scar tissue. But just again, it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of activity going on here. You can even see, you know, this is, might be a guy that's kind of growing back through the middle of it, but you know, some interesting stuff happening there. Um, so this is the, uh, a couple of the last areas I want to get into here. Um, so this is an, a shot now of the right side on him. Um, this is normal old scar. This is untreated. This is his FUT scar after two strip harvests. So you can see probably a two millimeter scar, a uh, good scar, but really nothing happening in it. You know, this is hair. This is scar. This is hair. Not much, much argument to be made there. Here's a vertiporfin treated area. So this is another one of those pink blemishes that I brought up. This is actually the first one that I noticed on that patient. When I saw him at four months, this was just a, a, a pink little bump. And now it's a pink little bump with a white hair growing out. And you can see if you follow this hair shaft up, I believe it ends about here. And you can even see it has that classic tapering where the older parts of the, the hair are very thin and the, the part next to the root where it's, it's actively growing is thicker. So this is clearly a hair that is shed and is now woken back up and growing again. So my, my you know hope was kind of correct. Um, but uh, you can see this was one of those pink mounds where hair is now growing. You can also see this is a good example, I think, of kind of what I was referring to with that other patient, where if you look at this area, so this is a vertiporfin treated area, this is a not vertiporfin treated area, you can see there's some exciting stuff going on here. There's some hair that seems to be growing through kind of the middle of the, the defect there. Um, there's that hair that woke back up. But I will say, if you look at the margins of this, you know, this is his normal tissue here. This is his normal tissue here. I mean, this this is, you know, uh, probably going to be about the same size, maybe even at, in, at this stage, it maybe even looks a little bit wider than this wound here. Um, again, I would be shocked if this didn't contract smaller. I'd be surprised if, if this area didn't fill out just with a little bit of, of resolution of this natural shock loss here. Um, but this could be a good example of, you know, patients where vertiporfin doesn't necessarily 
create like a super rock hard small scar, maybe the area heals kind of normally, but instead of it healing and filling in with scar tissue, it heals and, and fills in with kind of more normal tissue, you know? And does that normal tissue include normal skin appendages like hair follicles and sweat glands? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, but this is interesting to see kind of the two different um, elements of, of, of this drug, the ability to heal into a really small scar, just that, that, that vertiporfin shutting off basically the scar healing process so a scar really doesn't heal or, a very, or form or a very small scar forms. And then sort of the other aspect of it of, look, in some patients maybe does turning off that, that activity with the vertiporfin result in a wound, wound that's maybe a little bit more normal sized, but the the tissue that fills in in that wound, maybe it's a little different. So, you know, exciting stuff there. Um, so, and again, this is a, just a comparison here. So this is that same sort of, um, this is the exact same actually area that I, I excised and didn't treat. And then this is that same area we were just discussing here. Um, just a, a comparison. These are healing in the same time frame. Um, both these excisions were done on and, and closed on the same day within maybe 20 minutes of each other. And I think it's, it's you know, pretty... Uh, uncontroversial to say that the vertiporfin area just looks different, uh, a lot more going on. The tissue to me just looks like it's healing up differently and it's, it's, it's quite exciting to see those little pink bumps um, with hair growing through it there. So uh, that will do it for this vertiporfin update. Uh, five months, so next month, um, I, th I think we'll continue to, you know, see some interesting things. We'll kind of treat it as sort of like a halfway, you know, uh, update, uh, even though the, the any, anyone who does, you know, any kind of surgery will tell you that wounds continue to heal for much longer than, than six months or a year. Uh, and they continue to look better as, as time goes on typically. But, um, you know, I, I won't try to give too much, even though I know I have a, a bad habit of doing that and just speaking a lot, but I won't try to give too much of my own commentary because I really just kind of want to present what I'm seeing here. Um, <clears throat> And a couple things just to wrap up, you know, uh, I really appreciate everybody reaching out, everyone being so excited about this. Um, I, I get lots of emails every single day. I get lots of phone calls at the office every single day. I've had uh, so many people from all different walks of life reach out, and I really appreciate that. Um, it's been great to speak with researchers who have, have, have peripherally worked with this drug before or are interested with it. It's great to talk to other hair doctors, to other, you know, different types of surgeons that are thinking about integrating this into different scar revisions or, or, you know, skin, um, different kind of skin treatments and stuff like that. And it's always great, uh, always great speaking to patients. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't think I've gotten through a consult in the past, you know, four or five months without someone saying, all right, doc, I got to ask about the vertiporfin, what's going on. I think I may have even had a few people that have snuck in under the guise of wanting a hair transplant consult who really just want to talk about vertiporfin, which is you know, fine with me. I'm a hair nerd. Uh, I've never had a problem talking about this stuff, you know, uh, come on in any time we'll talk. Um, but I hope this serves as kind of an interesting update. I know you, I know you guys have really been wanting these updates, so hopefully, um, you know, this is the, the speed at which I'm going is okay. I know it's uh, we always want it faster, um, but uh, kind of in that same vein, I will say that science is slow, very, very slow. Um, I know that what we all wanted was for me to inject this into a scalp, and then it's you know holy grail, everything is is completely healed, and uh, you know without any evidence in the full full, full regrowth. Um, but uh, you know that's that's rarely how things work. Um, you know, I'm seeing some some interesting stuff with this, and I'm encouraged by it. And I, you know, I think we'll continue to pursue. I think this is worth continuing to pursue for certain. Um, but uh, you know, there's this is just the beginning. We still have a, a, quite a ways to go with just the data from this little project here. But um, of course, we're going to have to tweak it, you know, and adjust things in the future. And I've, I've been speaking with other doctors who have done stuff with it, and I appreciate their feedback. And and I've already, you know, maybe made some adjustments that I'll use in uh, future projects and, and little tests with it if we do that as well which I hope we will. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this update. Thank you so much for always watching these videos, for subscribing to our channel. If you're interested in uh, more updates on vertiporfin, please subscribe. This is where I will be updating them. If you are interested in just seeing hair transplant videos, that's that's my actual primary specialty, aside from being a, a hair scientist, which I love that as well. But um, we are a, a pretty gosh darn good hair transplant clinic, and I have a lot of hair transplant videos on my channel, and I will continue to show more of those. So stay tuned for more of those as well. Uh, but again, thank you guys uh, so much for watching. I am Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller and Blox Medical, and we will see you in the next one.